Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Lamplight City, the fun, awesome, retro-style steampunkish adventure detective crime-solving game. My name is Darwin, and I play video games. It's a pleasure to be back here playing this game for you. I hope you are enjoying it. So, we are looking for the Justice Killer. We got a ton of stuff to do. This is by far our most complicated case yet. I mean, we've never seen the list like this build up before, and there's still some room to go. So. Without further ado, we are going to head over to the Ruined Coffee House, where we used to meet um, Constance Upton. Now... Hmm. Clientele changed. And the sound. Boom. There we go. You heard about the murderer? The Justice Killer? Yeah, scary stuff. Eh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. He's only killing guys in the chum. Yeah, but I live in the chum, remember? Oh yeah. Well, just keep an eye out. And if you do get killed, I just want you to know, I'm not settling your tab. Pretty crazy, huh? My goodness. Killing okay. everyone out there. Begging your pardon, miss. How can I help you, sir? Talk to us before. I understand you were involved with Ennis Bowditch. Was involved, yes. I haven't spoken to him in nearly two months. Oh, uh, were you not aware of his death then? What? Ennis is, is dead? Well, this is awkward. <laughs> Indeed. I'm sorry to have to be the bearer of bad news. H how did it happen? I'm afraid he was murdered. Murdered? By who? And... and why? Those are exactly the questions I'm trying to answer myself. Oh, I see. Are you a detective? A private investigator, yes. Well, I'll answer what I can. If it helps any, that is. I'm certain it will. What was your relationship with Mr. Bowditch like? Oh, well, it was nice at first. He was a, a proper gentleman-like. But then... something changed. Oh? It's like I told Ruby. I think he might have got hit on the head at work, because he seemed to be a, a completely different person. He'd get angry for no reason. He even... well, that, that bit's not important. At first, I thought he was just going through some rough times, but after a while I realized he'd changed for the worse. So, I broke things off. He wasn't too happy about it, but I wasn't going to stick with a man like that. Ruby. This friend of yours, Ruby, did she know an MP named Percival McDonough? I, I'm not sure. Ruby knows a lot of men. Is that so? Well, no, I, I don't mean... It's just... Oh, damn it all, me and my big mouth. She'll have my guts for garters now. It's all right. No one's in trouble. But I think I'd like to speak with Ruby. Could you tell me where I can find her? Uh, no. You see, she moves around quite a lot. Never in the same place for more than a, a night or two. Right. I think she's given us a clear picture of what Ruby does for a living. Normally, I'd be all for pressing this girl more until she cracks, but I like her. I think we'll be able to find Ruby without causing her more discomfiture. Well, thank you for the information. You've been very helpful. Are you familiar with the Justice Killer? Justice Killer? Is that some kind of pesticide? Uh, no, it isn't. Never mind. You've been working here for quite a while, haven't you? I have, yes. Um, coming up on three years. Been a real pleasure getting to know all the regulars. They've come to be sort of like a, a second family. By the way, whatever happened with you and your lady friend? I beg your pardon? Well, that nice lady you met in here a couple of times. Did it work out between the two of you? Oh, that? No, that, that was strictly business. Mm. Right. Well, if you see her, tell her I said hello. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're not with Miss Upton. It's a crazy painting. <sighs> All right. So we know Ruby is part of the oldest profession. I don't think we're ready to go down to the docks yet, though. Oh, 
It's still there. Again, it's so loud. Looks like they haven't bothered cleaning this up yet. What a mess. It's an ad for whiskey. Or, perhaps, paint thinner. Sometimes it can be hard to tell the difference. All right. Doesn't look like cleaning up is high on the list of priorities around here. There's Kurt. And anyway, there wasn't anything that we could do, so... I don't like it when the streets are this quiet. Let Excuse me, barmaid? Hi, you know. what do you need? Do you know anything about the man sitting at that table over there? Not really. He comes in here a few times a week, but he mostly keeps to himself. I see his type all the time, though. Older, probably retired, and looking to escape his home life. I feel sorry for him, but that sort of customer is my bread and butter. Are you familiar with the Justice Killer? What is that, some fancy drink concoction? Uh, no. It's the name that's been given to a serial murderer here in the chunk. I see. Never heard of him. And if he's smart, he won't show his face around here. You know, this place suddenly feels just a little bit safer. How are things here now that the election hubbub has subsided? Oh, right. I thought you looked familiar. You were the one in here asking about the fellow who was killed. That's right. Well, there hasn't been too much excitement since then. I've hardly had to toss anyone out, which is a right shame. Why's that? Kicking out a rowdy customer shakes things up a bit on a quiet night like this. Gets the blood flowing, you know? What would a customer have to do to warrant being thrown out? My general rule is, if they're being a nuisance, they're out. If they try to pick a fight, or are just being generally disrespectful, it's a one-way ticket to the pavement outside. Good to know. I appreciate you taking the time to chat. Yeah, yeah. Well, Phil always tells us to be diplomatic first, so let's let's try. Excuse that. me, are you Kurt Williamson? That's right. Who are you? Miles Fordham. I'm a private investigator. Oh yeah. What is it you want from me? Ethel sent me to tell you she wants you to come home right away. <laughs> I should have known. I can't get away for more than a few hours before she's put the entire city on high alert. How much of my retirement fund did she waste on getting you to come down here? I'm only doing this because I need some information. <laughs> the joke's on you, then. You can just go back and tell her I'll come home when I'm damn well ready. Why is it you're so averse to returning home? I enjoy going out and having a good time. Is that so wrong? Your wife told me she doesn't like you spending your money on drink. What I spend my money on is none of her business, and even less of yours. What's this world coming to when a man can't even drink in peace without all his affairs shouted from the rooftops? You know, this whole situation seems awfully familiar. Listen, Mr. Williamson, I think I know what you're going through. Oh, yeah? My wife and I were having a rough patch. I wasn't being honest with her, and it nearly drove us apart. But you managed to fix things. Yes, I was fortunate. I did the right thing before it was too late. And what did you do? I saw her a good time. It was simple. I just communicated honestly and openly with her. I told her what was wrong and how I was feeling. And you know what? She listened. Have you ever told Ethel why you like going out? No. I assume she wouldn't understand. I really wish she would come out with me, but I know she'd never agree. How do you know? Have you actually talked to her about this? Well, no. Well, then maybe you should. If she knew you wanted company, she might just give it a try. You know, I never thought of it like that. I'm going to go home right now and tell her. And if she refuses, well, at least I asked, right? That's the spirit. Thanks for the advice, friend. I really do appreciate it. Miles Fordham, private investigator and psychologist. Not bad. I have to say, I'm impressed. 
<laughs> All right. Well, side quest completed. Uh, let's go back to the apartment now that he's home. We should be able to get the information we need. Now, if I have one complaint about this game, it's that the background noise shifts and constantly having to, to adjust it, or sometimes it's all right, and then you start talking to somebody and it gets really loud. So I do apologize about that. I'm trying my best to make it so that doesn't happen, but it's it's keeps happening. Ah, oh, Mr. Fordham. Thank you so much for getting Kurt back home. Don't mention it. Now, would you be willing to answer some questions? Why, well, yes, of course. Tell me what you know about Burley Cause. He and his wife hadn't been living next door very long, maybe four months or so. But I didn't talk to either of them very much. They weren't interested in being neighborly, I guess. It's a shame, really. Maybe if we had known one another better, something like this could have been prevented. What happened on the day Mr. Cause was killed? I was here, at home, doing my knitting as usual. All of a sudden, I heard a loud bang. It sounded like a gunshot. I went and knocked on Mrs. Cause's door, but there was no answer. I did notice a smell, though, like flowers. Something seemed wrong. So I decided to report the incident to the police. Not long after that, an officer showed up and started asking questions. Awful man, he was so rude. I gotta report him, but I forgot his name. I think it started with a P. Parsons? Yes, that's him. He called for some more officers and they got into the apartment. That's when I found out Mr. Cause had been murdered. Huh, <laughs> Parsons. Where is Mrs. Cause now? I don't know. With her mother, maybe. That's usually how it goes. You wouldn't happen to know where that is, would you? Afraid not, but uh, there is one other thing. Yes? Don't say I told you this, but... Well, I used to hear the two of them through my wall. I tried ignoring it since it's really none of my business, but it became impossible. What was it you heard? I don't believe they had a happy marriage. They'd have awful fights a couple times a week. What would they fight about? Oh, all sorts of things. The worst one was when she discovered he was going to a brothel. I think he might have hit her on a few occasions, too, but it can't be certain. I hope you don't think me a horrible old gossip, but I thought you might like to know. Not at all. I'm glad you told me. I'm beginning to think this Ruby character is more intricately tied. Are you familiar with the Justice Killer? You mean the serial killer who's been killing men in Chumley? That's the one. Nah, never heard of him. I... what? I'm just pulling your leg, <laughs> Mr. Ford. I like this one. She's got spirit. Unfortunately, I only know what I've read in the Gazette. But it's scary to think some maniac is loose on the streets doing such terrible things. And with Kurt going out by himself for hours at a time? Oh, I don't like it one bit. How long have you been living here? Well, Kurt and I moved in shortly after we were married, so it's been about 34 years. Goodness, that's a long time to be living in one place. Yes, well, the building may be a bit... You can't really ask for much more Sorry. than that. I appreciate your time, Mrs. Williamson. Have a good day, Mr. Fordham. What do we do from here? So we have violent men who hit women. We have Ruby, from the oldest professions. Docks, flowers. Let's see. 
Well, let's go to the docks. Blank surfaces don't stay that way for very long around here. Blank surfaces don't stay... Ah, the chum. You can never truly get away from it as much as you may try. Huh? What? Who is it? Hello, sir. I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions. Go ahead, but make it quick. Time is money, after all. Did you employ a man named Ennis Bowditch? I did, yes. He only worked for me occasionally, but he was always punctual and performed his job well. I learned recently that he had been killed. It was a tremendous shame. Workers of his caliber are so hard to come by. Do you have any information relating to Mr. Bowditch's murder? I am afraid not. The truth is, I knew very little about him. It's the same with most of my men. I have a business to run, you see. It affords me very little time to socialize. Are you familiar with the Justice Killer? I believe I saw a headline in the newspaper recently mentioning that name, but I dismissed it as fear-mongering nonsense. There are more important things I need to worry about. But the Justice Killer is directly responsible for the death of one of your workers. Oh? Is that right? Hmm. Well, there's nothing I can do about it. What my men get up to in their off time is none of my business. Wow, this guy is even worse than you, Miles. Quit the character. What does your work here involve? I'm in charge of tracking and catalog. I receive the shipping manifest and make sure that things get unloaded and sent to the right places. Sorry again. And you do all this by yourself? Oh, of course not. I'm in charge of administration. A team of workers does all the heavy lifting. Thank you for your time. I'll let you return to work. Right, you are. I mean, Mr. Hastings knows something. Trevor Hastings? Is that you? Why, Detective Fordham. Fancy seeing you again. What brings you down to the docks? I'm trying to track down a serial murderer, who I believe is the same man who was breaking into the flower shop. You don't say. I wish I could help you, but the guy never came back after the night you and your partner came around. Where is your partner, anyway? Oh, he's... Around. Well, give him my regards. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get this crate back. Or Cecilia will have my head on a platter. Of course. Good seeing you again. He's around? <laughs> That's probably the most clever thing you've said in months. Well done. Oh, this is kind of a dead end. You don't remember he was in the flower shop, he helped the uh, owner. All right, let's see if we can find out information about the redites then, so we can unlock the uh, iron mill. Oh, Reggie. Reggie, 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 Reggie. Chief Snelling? Yes, Fordham? Have you got any information on the redites? The redites? That ridiculous gang of troublemakers? Yes, I have some information. What's your interest in them? A witness is refusing to speak with me unless I can figure out who sabotaged his iron mill. I see. All I can offer is a list of names of known redites along with their last known whereabouts. But I remind you that you only have until tomorrow afternoon before this indulgence expires, and I throw you in jail. This seems like a waste of time. That's my decision to make. Very well. I'll give you the list when you're ready to leave. I need to get back to my investigation. Yes. Time is not on your side, Fordham. What's wrong with your forehead, dude? Here you are. This is the most recent list of known redites. Red activist, 18 This is a lot of names. If we're going to track down this saboteur, it might be best to retire to a more tranquil environment. Fancy a trip back to Upton's? Clovis Sutherland, Guy McKee, Paris Wilson, Marcus Chapman. Peyton Ferguson, Lucian Donaldson. No, one of them's deceased. Involved in a factory explosion. Um. P. F. Oh, there we go. 
don't have it. All right, so we have to go back to Uptons. Okay. PF. Remember that. PF. <clears throat> so I have to go back to Uptons. Right. This should be a quiet enough spot to concentrate on finding that saboteur. I just hope Upton doesn't mind you turning her parlor into your own personal study. I'm sure she'll have no objection. Now, let's have a look at that list again. Peyton Ferguson. The initials match those on the letter we got at the Lamplight Depot. I'd say it's our best bet. If dead men could cause explosions, let's just say things would be a lot different. This clearly isn't the right suspect. Lucian Donaldson. Those initials don't match the ones on the letter. I don't think this person is our suspect. Paris Wilson. Those initials... Unless Mr. McKee has escaped from prison, which I highly doubt, I think we can rule out Mr. Sullivan as a suspect. He's Western Vespucci's problem now. All right. So do we have... We do. Lucian Donaldson's, Paris Wilson's, nope, Peyton Ferguson. P.F. <clears throat> well, well, who's this lovely specimen? Allow me to introduce Peyton Ferguson, known red-eyed and prime suspect in a sabotage at the Thorbaum Ironworks. I picked him up and brought him straight to you. Ooh, a saboteur. Just leave him to me and I'll make him feel right at home. Please find the justice killer soon, Miles. Being Giles' prisoner is not my idea of a good time. Right. I'll leave you to it, then. Have fun, PF. Fantastic. So now we can go back to the ironworks and get more information from the foreman over there. But I'm going to leave, because I, I have a feeling that's going to lead us into a longer piece. So I'm going to leave it right here. Um, thank you very much for coming around. Please give a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button, be notified of new content as I post it. My name is Darwin, and I will see you on the flip side.